Hello, everyone. It's Lydia with the Oneness Junkie podcast and YouTube channel. And today I'm excited to introduce you to our next guest. I'm here with Luca Leonti. Hi, Luca. Hi, Lydia. Thanks for having me today. I'm so glad to have you. I love introducing new people to the audience and I hope they enjoy your story because I sure did when I read it online. So will you take a moment and introduce yourself and a little background about you? Of course. Um, so my name is Luca. I grew up in the south of France um, to a French mom and Italian dad. And I spent most of my childhood down there. And when I was a teenager, um, I took an interest in health and fitness because I struggled with my body image. I was bullied a lot um, at school and at home, but at home, it was not so much the bullying like you would, you know, you would think. It's more, you know, like the comments, the commentary that your parents can make sometimes, like, you know, like not, you didn't do, you didn't do this thing right. Or why are you wearing this color shirt? It's too bright. You know, that kind of like, like more. Like subtle, <laughs> they were subtle. Yeah, subtle b uh, bullying like this. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, after years of this, I just, you know, I developed a lack of confidence and I felt so alone because I felt like there was nobody I could talk to, uh, because I was afraid of being judged and, and being bullied all the time at school, in my social circle, at home. Uh, and really what I wanted to do is to be a cool kid, like my cousins, like my brother. Uh, I wanted to have muscles to be stronger. Ironically, <laughs> I'm the smallest in my family, the skinniest in my family. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted, you know, to have that confidence and I wanted to be liked and be loved, you know, because this is what we all want. Ultimately, we want to be seen, acknowledged and loved. Um, so <laughs> what I started doing is I spent a lot of time reading on nutrition books and going to the gym. Um, and eat. I was obsessed with what I was eating, when I was eating, uh, you know, anything I could do to uh, for my body to get bigger. Um, yeah. So I got some results. Obviously, you know, after a lot of effort, I did get some result. But um, one, it didn't last, and two, I was still not happy. And uh, and so this this led me to feeling really depressed and unhappy and. I was constantly, constantly comparing myself to others because that's the way I only knew, you know, uh, growing up. Uh, so that really, really took a toll on me. And, uh, and I just wanted to change things out of pure willpower at the time because I didn't know any better. Uh, and again, it never worked or, you know, I would get results for a few months and then, you know, I would uh, like two steps forward, three steps back. That was kind yeah. of my journey for a long time. Um, and then on top of that, I was just so hard on myself for not succeeding. You know, it caused me to hit rock button so many times and I was so unhappy. I would, I would hurting and I would find myself crying all the times. Um, just feeling helpless, just, right? Yeah, just feeling like helpless. Sorry, right, for just a second, things. I just went back there for, <laughs> for No, it's okay. I'm just saying um, like, you know, you try to control things exactly. and you're so helpless because you... We think we can be in control of ourselves and it's exhausting. Uh, totally. Yes. Because I didn't know at the time that there was nothing wrong with me. You know, I was trying to fix something that I couldn't because there's nothing wrong with me. And then I can't control other people's expectations or the way they saw me, you know, right. at the time. And there's and no so freedom in that, right? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I was, I was hurting a lot. Um, I felt super lonely. I had no support system, really, just... Uh, that I could really go and confine in. Um, and I just was not happy where I was in life. Um, so then my internal dialogue became, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not smart. Um, and when I went to the doctor, they suggested, or sh the doctor suggested that um, I start medication. And I really put a, a stop in my track and I was like, whoa, no, <laughs> you know, Wait, I, let me ask a question. Medication for like yes. depression or medication for like some health problems, you know, like no, 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 for uh, depression. depression. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, and I looked at her and I said, no, I, because I had a very negative view of having to take medication, um, for being depressed, Yeah. you know, you know, like you see in the movies, then, you know, you, for me, it equaled that. I would be less energetic than, you know, for me, it just equal that really something was wrong with me. And then I didn't want to become 
In French, we say a vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to become a vegetable. Like numb. numb <laughs> yeah, numb to, numb to everything else. Yeah, because I was yeah. already the way I was living. So I didn't want to do this anymore. Um, and so that's really when I decided that I needed to do something different. And I could not live, I could not live like this anymore because I was so miserable. Can uh, I ask you, like, what, t what, how old were you at this time? Uh, I was early 20s. Okay. Yeah. So it was actually, um, so at that time, I already moved to the US. Um, so I moved to the US after I graduated from college. Yeah. And really, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to, I graduated from college in France and I was like, I do not know what I want to do. <laughs> I have no clue. And I graduated with a bachelor in um, um, British and American studies. Wow. I don't even know what the traditional American <laughs> Basically, studies are. Basically, it was all about um, <laughs> British and American civilization, literature. Um, so just because I love speaking English, I, I wanted, I've been wanting to come to the U.S. for a long time. And so since I had no clue what I wanted to do, I just kept going into speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I graduated, I still did not know what I wanted to do. And basically the major that I chose at the time, um, the thing that I could do was teaching. Right. And I said, I don't want to teach. <laughs> I already spent 20 years in school. I don't want to spend another 30 in school, right? I understand. Uh, and so funny because I moved to the U.S. and I became a teacher, <laughs> a preschool teacher. You learn uh, how to survive, right? Exactly. Uh, but I actually loved it. I, I was a teacher for 10 years, uh, preschool level. So anywhere from actually babies to three, that's kind of my, my preferred age group. Um, so that was, that was really fun. That's so neat. It's like the beginning stages, like of planting a seed in a child, like you can really mm -hmm. influence them. Right. And they're those formative years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Zero to seven is the really the most important uh, time frame in anybody's yeah. life. And this is where, you know, whatever people tell you at that time or how they treat you, this is how you're going to carry for the rest of your life until you know better, until you do some healing work. So yes, that's exactly yeah. the time frame that, <laughs> that got me stuck for a long time. Um, yeah. So tell us about some of the <clears throat> overcoming, you know, like you, you're a teacher at this point, where are you in your mind, in your journey of your body and your weight and everything? So at that time, so after I refused, um, being on medication, I still kept going with therapy, but I also uh, started to learn about coaching and I became a coach. I, so one of my friends was always coming to me for questions and support, and I was always uh, helping her. And she said, you should become a coach. And I was like, no, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah. uh, but one day I was doing, um, I was on the computer for something totally different. Um, on the At the time I was using meetup.com. I know what that is. Yeah, I have a people, couple right? of myself. Yeah. So I was on that website and uh, there was this meetup that showed up for coaching. <laughs> And it happened to be like the next day or the, like really soon. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Uh, it's a sign. <laughs> so I clicked on it. I meet up with uh, one of the um, coaches at the time and had this amazing conversation. And I, was, and I told myself, I want to be like that guy. <laughs> and so I signed up for the program. It was a year long program, very intensive. Uh, it was one um, once a month, I would go in person and learn how to be a coach, but also be coach for a whole weekend. Then I had my own coach for the whole year. And then the people that were in program with me, we all coach each other. So yeah. very intense. Going and through the journey yourself. Exactly. And I learned so much. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much um, as to why I was stuck and you know what brought me to the point. It was just like so many realization. Again, like, wow, none of that is my fault. It's, you know, people just put the expectation on me or their fear on me. And then because I was so young and really at that time, you know, when you're like, yeah, zero to seven, your only goal is you want to be loved by your parents. You know, whatever they say, you just take it for granted. Oh my gosh. Like my dad didn't like it when, I don't know. Yeah. I said, X, Y, Z. Yeah. X, Y, Z. He got really mad. Uh oh, I better not do this next time. You know, or. I don't know. Somebody yeah, asked I mean, me because I was wearing this, you know, this shirt or, um, oh man, man, whenever I'm myself and I'm expressive and I'm happy, 
people make a comment about it. So I better just start shutting down. So yeah. then it just became of, I cannot be who I am in this world. And so I started isolating myself. I would just like live in my bedroom. <laughs> That's basically what I did. And then we, my parents were working all day. So they were, uh, I would not see them all day. They would leave super early in the morning, come back late at night. And I would go to school and just be by myself a lot of time. Um, and then we come back at night. And again, it's just like, well, you did this wrong. And, and you're not supposed to do this and this and that. And, and my dad, especially my dad, uh, maybe because an older generation was not very open to talking. It was like his way or the highway. Uh, and then, yeah, the dinner table, it was like he came home and he was eating and watching TV and then we could not interrupt him. So this, yeah. you know, the silence kept going. So I did learn a lot, you know, um, and through the work that I've done myself, like I've been able to forgive him. And now our relationship is totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk on the phone at least twice a week. And, uh, and the dynamic is, has totally changed. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was your work that you had to do. I wanted to interject mm -hmm. earlier when you were sharing and just let you know that I understand. Uh, I have a several. I have a similar type of life uh, growing up, and one of the and it's they get these things get etched in your head, and then you know you, it takes a lot to disrupt the neuro connections that are programmed from the rep repetition. But one of the repetitive things my dad used to always say, and I'm, I'm sharing this to help the listeners of course. to understand what I did to transform it. Okay. So he used to say, don't eat that. You're going to be as big as the side of the house. And it was like a repetitive comment if he saw us eating something. So just the, just the concept of it's not okay to eat, you know, like the idea of eating and is bad is the one message. And mm -hmm. then who knows what I was eating. It was just, you know, it was always a comment. The other thing he used to say repetitively is because I was the last child. I was the fourth child of four girls. And so he kind of said this, like, not just to his wife, but to his four girls, subsequently, I'm going to say that part of my healing process was to recognize he was trying to, he thought he was protecting me and warning me of the way the world really is and that you should be careful. You know, like he thought it was a helpful contribution to my life. But what, as me, I was the youngest and I, I had the mouth and I'm not afraid. I'm very courageous. And I would talk back to him and I would say, well, you're eating it. And he, this is his response. He would say, well, I'm not running for Congress or looking for a husband. And my little nine-year-old brain was like, I'm not looking for a husband either. <laughs> you know, I'm nine years old. But what is that implanting in my head as a female? Like you can't have a big ass and get a <laughs> husband. You know, like it's to, it's just a message. It was his message you were saying before, people are just projecting their fears, their concerns, his, what he liked, maybe he didn't like a big ass on a woman, but there are people who are okay yeah. with that, you know? So I'm just saying, I mean, look, Kim Kardashian's really popular. <laughs> <laughs> I That's grew cool. up before Kim Kardashian. So, you know, maybe my life would have been different if I would have <laughs> grown up after In that time frame. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm just saying that these things are implanted, but how do you transform them is by recognizing where they come from, right? Yeah. Why is that person saying that? And, and is it as mean spirited as you're taking it? Or is it just that that's his ear, you know, negativity and, mm -hmm. and, um, anger that he lives with that he's projecting onto you. So when you learn how to disassociate yourself from mm -hmm. the comments, that's when the healing and that forgiveness, right. You can't even go to forgiveness until yeah. you have understanding, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. At first you need to, you need to be aware of what's going on. Um, and that could be, you know, through talking to other people or, or you know, coaching, therapy. There are many modalities, um, or even also alternative uh, modalities. And then once you're aware, like, oh, my gosh, wow, this is what happened. But really what's most important is the meaning you give it. You give it. 
So for me, my and the meaning, power, not only the meaning, the power, but the power you mm -hmm. give it in your life. Yeah, that comes. Yeah, so that yeah, it's together. So for me, all those reflections and everything that people would say to me in my head was, oh my gosh, I'm not lovable. I'm not good enough. My mom once told me I would never find a girlfriend. You know, sometimes it was really mean. And so, guess what? I never had a girlfriend for the longest time. Like, yes, I would go on. I would be dating, but not a long term relationship because in my head was like, oh, this. I'm, you know, somebody's going to quit me. I mean, it's going to leave you. Yeah. Leave me because I'm not lovable. Right. Because in her head, I was too, too much of a perfectionist. But, but then now in the, you know, looking back, I'm like, yeah, but I learned that from you guys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just, re it's a lot of vulnerability to heal. It's a lot of courage because you have to face, you know, you have to, some not necessarily really what happened in the past, but you need to be able to shine a light on everything that happened in the past and what you made it mean so that you can heal it so that you can make, like you said, you can make the choice. Um, do I want to focus on this right now? What is this contributing to my life right now? Or do I want to choose something else? Um, right. Yeah. So, so Yesterday on a, co a podcast conversation, we were talking about really there's two options. You can choose suffering which is an mm -hmm. option, like totally possible. You uh -huh. can do that. Or the other opposite of suffering is like joy and not suffering. So, you know, you get to choose, like, that's what free will is. You get to choose. What do you want to do? You want to suffer or you want to be in joy? And so it's just a, it's just a mindset, right? Exactly. And, and you, um, I, you identify as a mindset coach, <laughs> which is what your title says. So yeah, that's important. One of the things I wanted to tell you that I thought was good about what you said is that when you went to that meetup, you saw that guy and you said, I want to be like that. And so I just highly recommend that people choose coaches that have what they want, Correct. that are exhibiting what they are looking to achieve and the things that they've successfully achieve because everybody wants to identify as a coach and and has something to offer and i think people do have something to offer but you want to find a coach who offers what you're looking for yeah that's totally true and also um so one of my mentors used to say that whatever you can see in somebody is present in yourself yeah because if it was not in yourself then you wouldn't be able to uh see it yeah so Agreed. when you, yeah. So when you relate with somebody, it's because you know, like even though you might not know consciously, but unconsciously, you just feel in your in your soul that the same results are available for yourself as well. That's good, and you're speaking on a it on it from a positive perspective. But that actually is also the case yes. when you complain about what other people yes. have. Like, God, they're such a perfectionist. What is their yes. problem? You know, <laughs> that's like so that's true. an unidentified aspect of you, and you have to ask yourself, well, where am I? A per what area of my life am I a perfectionist, and exactly. why is he irritating me so much? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's totally true. Projection works both ways. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about um, how you help people. All right. So um, my thing, so just because that's the way I, my journey went, is I had to do a lot of self-care work, you know, le learn how to love myself, le learn how to forgive myself, how to be compassionate with myself. Um, so it's really this message that I want to help all of us with is, nothing is wrong with you uh, we just need to reprogram your mind and the way you think about yourself and so uh, a lot of the work that i do is really transforming like you said earlier the identity what is your current identity and where did the identity comes from so then we you know we um, talk about this and i have some tools that my client can use to uh, really dig deep because as long as, you know, we need to really bring everything up to the surface, you know, it's just like an iceberg, like, you know, your actions, you know, like 5% of the iceberg, and then it's determined by the 95% that's under the water. Yeah. So we really need to dig into uh, this iceberg under the water. Why do you do the things you do? You know, who taught you this? Um, and then start to rewire your brain that way. Like, oh, you know, actually I'm very likable and I'm very uh, extroverted. Uh, let's give the power back to my parents. My parents thought of me this way, but that's not who I am. 
I am Luca and I'm so energetic and I have so much energy and I love to talk to people and I love to be surrounded by people, but I spent the first 25 years of my life being alone. That was not me. So, and the only way that I can step into my real power is by taking care of myself. It's by giving myself what I need. So I know that I need, you know, every day I need to start my day with meditation. I need to start my day <clears throat> with some type of exercise, um, some affirmations, some movement. For me, that's the best way to start my day. And then what, you know, like a, like a tank of gas, you know, you drive your car and then you have to replenish your, your gas tank at some point, right? What you need is really to be so aware of what you need time, you know, um, in each period of it, of your day to be able to give yourself that, you know, if I feel sad, okay, or if I feel tired, what do I need right now? And so a lot of people, you know, like we, first, the, the most common things that i that I come upon in my coaching is that people just want to get rid of the negative emotions, get rid of the negative feelings. Hey, Luca, how do I stop this from happening? I don't want to feel negative. I don't want to be negative. But the thing that we need to understand is that those feelings are part of being human. You cannot stop them from happening. You can choose your your answer to them. You can choose what you're going to do to how you're going to react to that, but you cannot stop them. So it's really a work to embracing again. It's really embracing embracing your journey of where you are right now. It's okay to feel sad, but before when I was sad, I would eat. That was my way of coping. Now when I'm sad, I go out for a walk or I call a friend or you know I go snuggle with my dog. Um. And then, so that's what I do as a mindset coach. It's really, for me, it's just, you know, having like a light and just like, okay, this area is a little dark right now. Let's put some light on it um, and let's examine what's, let's go see. Let's go in a cave together <laughs> and let's just do some cleanup um, and just, uh, so there's like another um, metaphor. It's like, we have seven rooms in our heads. Uh, that's, I don't know if you've heard of this metaphor before. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like we have several rooms and so some of them are lit up and some of them are not lit up yet. And so you just go and explore and there's always a room that you can go in <laughs> and turn on. You know, we have so we are so much more than what the labels uh what labels people put on us. And I think it's 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 not an easy work. <laughs> uh we have to be honest. Um but it's also the beauty of it. Because you because now my life is completely different. Like for once, who would knew that I would be talking to my dad, you know, twice a week? Who would knew that? And it's not like just like how's the weather. It's cheap conversations that I'd never in a million years I thought I would have. And it's from me doing my own healing. And even since then, now I know about his past and his journey and he never opened up before. And now it makes even more sense for me. And I was like, oh, wow. I had no clue this was the childhood he had. And, and now he... So me being open invites him to be open. Right. And so and so it's just so beautiful. Even for the first time in how long have I been here? Almost 20 years. Uh, recently, for the first time in 20 years, he said, I want to come and visit you. I want to come and, you know, spend time with you at your house in the States. My dad wouldn't even like, I know he, he lives in France. He wouldn't even go to Italy, which is like two hours away. You know, <laughs> he never <laughs> wanted to get out of the country. He's really missing out for sure. <laughs> yeah, but like you said earlier, I had at one point like our relationship got really bad, especially uh, after my mom passed away. And I told you, like seven years later, now I know because we were both grieving, we we're both you know really sad. Uh, so a lot of nastiness came out of <laughs> the two of us. Uh, anger, uh, your anger, anger was yeah. mis was misdirected at the wrong at the people we love, right? Exactly. And so I had to be very clear with them one day. So my way of communicating uh, at the time with them, especially with my parents, uh, was through uh, writing letters. So again, because we never talked at home, so I never learned how to express myself really in a way uh, that was... Um, well, and you kind of thought that they weren't interested in mm -hmm. talking, right? Because they didn't foster that in your home. Exactly. But but really what you probably learned by now with this new relationship is that they didn't know how. Exactly. So you kind mm -hmm. of brought the how to them that, that they didn't have. And I only know that because that was my case with my mom and my family. I was the communicator, so I had to bring it back home. Yeah, not totally. And then, yeah, just so I often find 
myself, calling myself like the, um, like I broke the gener generational patterns, which is so important. People, especially in our generations right now, where there is so much more, we know so much more about taking care of ourselves in a way that, you know, going to the spa or therapy, you know, there are all ways to take care of ourselves. Um, what was I going to say? So, yeah, so I just. Yeah, we were just talking about that. breaking generational yeah. trauma and like. Trauma, yes. Yeah, and one of the things that I would share is that. I used to expect like I would be angry because my parents didn't teach that to me and didn't provide that to me as a child and be like, you know, what do they know? Oh, my God. Like I have shitty parents. But then I came to a place where I thought, you know, maybe God, you know, we're all unique. We're all special. We all have something to offer. Maybe God just gave me this insight and this information to give back to them. Maybe I'm their teacher. Maybe I'm their yeah. helper. And maybe it doesn't always have to be the parent that raises the child. Maybe it's the child can raise the parent. True. You know? So to come back to the story with my dad. So what I did, so I was, um, it was maybe a month after my mom's funeral. Like I stayed home for a long time. So she passed away in March and I stayed up to May. Um, so towards the beginning of um, the end of April, beginning of May, like we were now speaking terms. I'm I, like, I was, went and stayed with uh, my cousin because it was really bad. And so I wrote him a letter and I said, look, I don't want to have to severe this relationship. Like I want you in my life. And now you are the only one that you have left also. I uh, you know. And, and I don't want us to, I want us to be on speaking terms and look next week, I'm going back to the U S so it is your choice. We can keep this we can keep this relationship going over ice. I'm moving back to the US and you won't see me anymore. And within an hour, maybe a couple hours of receiving my letter, he called me and he apologized. Um, and he was like, I'm so sorry um, for the way that I've been treating you. Wow. Uh, I do want you in my life. And then he was like, please come back home. Wow. And so this is what I had to do. but. Even like I was not mean or anything. I said, "Hey, I want you in my life. Uh, I want you know. I want you to uh, know my girlfriend. I want us to have a relationship. I want you to come visit. You know, I want when I come home, I want us to have you know a relationship because I'm the only person you have left." <laughs> right. Um, he wanted it too. He didn't know how to. He do didn't it. know how to do it exactly. Yeah. Because of his upbringing, upbringing, up bringing and um and so then after that every time i would go home which i try to go every year at least once a year then he started opening up and you know and sharing things about his child like i knew a little bit but not to the extent that um what he has shared so far yeah um, and then has he, been in, has he ever been encouraged to like do his any of his own work like on himself like with a coach or anything no so my dad is old now uh he's uh, in his 80s um, and also, I believe it was uh, 20. Uh, basically, when I moved to the U.S., um, he got really si sick. He got encephalitis, which is basically an inf inflammation of the brain while he was um, on vacation with my mom. And after that, he became, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this name, um, aphasic, aphasia. Uh -huh. He had aphasia. Um, so for the longest time, he couldn't talk. He, uh, he had to learn how to walk as well. Um, so it was a long recovery for him. Yeah. Um, and still to this day, even though we speak all the time, um, sometimes he will just tell me like, I, I feel so frustrated. I cannot, I don't remember how to say these words. And it's frustrating because it's like, it could be simple words and I can relate because we, having lived in the U S so long myself now, I also sometimes don't remember how to speak French, but I feel like <laughs> it's like, this, you know, like I would not, I do not remember how to say like a mug and it's just so frustrating sometimes. Um, so I think he's being an older generation and it also like, uh, even though he can take care of himself, but I think people, I think he thinks people relate to him differently because he's older, because he doesn't speak as well now. Right, so and they, they lose some of their faculties and everything. Yes, and so I think this is what has been the hardest for him because he's somebody who's always done everything by himself his whole life. Um, and so for him to be seen as weak is really, 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 really hard. 
So yeah. no, he. I, I don't think he will ever do any kind of work like therapy or. Um, yeah. But I think he, he's definitely opening up. He's definitely yeah. breaking some, down some walls. Um, yeah, I was just asking. My mom's eighty-seven. I can't see her going to a therapist. But it's interesting because, uh, and my dad passed away like three or four years ago, and he was ninety-three. Um, However, what's interesting is, um, you know, everyone is evolving on at their own pace and their own mm-hmm. level. So I have seen like changes in my mom that are part of her own personal evolutionary journey. And I just have to honor and respect it and not have the expectation that she's supposed to be something that I want her to be rather than just yeah. honoring who she is and allowing her because when we give that to others, we put that out there and we receive it as well. So it's really all about free will. We get to choose who and what we want to be in this lifetime. Yeah, I totally agree. And I've also think it's to come back to expectation. It's not fair to put your expectations on others. Yeah, because just like they did when you were a child, they right? Yeah. They did their expectations of you onto them. So now you understand how that feels and you're not going to be doing it to other people. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) When when you heal the wound, you learn not to do it to other people. There are lots of unconscious, unawakened people who are not uh, familiar with their own wounds. They're Mm -hmm. buried. And then that's why they treat others in a way that maybe they were treated because they just think that's the way you just do it. You know, this is like your time to, you know, um, I remember just that mindset, like when you get older, like that somehow gives you the right to have it your way or something like you've earned it. Yeah. And so toxic. That's not the way it is. <laughs> no, it's not the way. <laughs> Until you get someone like you and me who come in and they're going, Nope. I'm breaking the trap. I'm breaking the trauma. I'm breaking exactly, the trauma. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny. And also sometimes uh, by doing our own work, we don't realize how much we can inspire or impact other people's lives. Um, like I would always remember like my friends back home, you know, so it was funny because I moved. So they knew me as this person, right? This Luca. And then I moved to the U S and then I come back for vacation. And they're like, Oh, something's changed. We like this new Luca. Yeah, but, he's just oh, confident Luca. Exactly, but also he's a little weird. Like, because at the time, why is he so talking I, like that? Exactly, why is he talking like this? And then, what what is that manifesting manifesting uh, thing? <laughs> what does about? that mean? Love attraction, and everybody was making fun of me again. But this time, I was like, I don't care. You know, I'm gonna do me. You can get on board with it. You cannot get on board. I don't care. Right, but you're missing talk- out. <laughs> I kept talking about it, and I would say like. For example, we would go somewhere and I would go and all my friends were like, oh my gosh, how are we going to find parking? That's going to be like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not even worried about this because I know when I get there, I'm going to get a parking spot and I would not fail. I would get a parking spot. Rock star parking. Yeah. And so people were like, after a while, they were like, okay, I want to know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, especially what, like my best friend. Uh, so I had this conversation with her recently and, um, and she was like, if it was not for you, I don't think I would have ever considered doing this type of work. So now she opened her own business. She's very successful in France, uh, not not with coaching. She does something totally different, uh, but she's also very interested in uh, alternative um, medicine and modalities. Her thing is numerology. Um, and she said, if I had not heard about all your stories about the law of attraction and how you attracted this and that, uh, I would never have gotten into this. And then my other friends were like, they changed their diets. They were like before, you know, especially for, you know, we're as French people, we're renowned for, you know, good food <laughs> and uh, good beverages. And so little by little, they were like made some changes and they felt the energy in their, you know, in their lives and they felt better and they were able to do more things with their children. So I think we also like the work we do for ourselves is yes, impacts us the most, but also all the people around us, like the ripple effect. Right, because yeah. then you're going to talk to these people, like uh, they're going to learn something, or just being around you. You just also the frequency, right? Because everything is energy and everything is frequencies, um, and so 
the aura you touch way more people than if you were like in a in a negative mood like nobody wants to be around you <laughs> right um but when you're positive then everybody wants wants that they, they yeah. want they want to be like you they want to know what's going on and on the oneness shanky podcast we talk about how we're all connected and so yes. when it's not just energy but when your energy is positive you help to transmute the energy to others in a positive way. And that's what the podcast is about. It's a global platform that can, you know, I'm allowing the internet to take this message that we're sharing to anyone, anywhere that has access to it, that needs it. And I just kind of put it out there and the universe creator, God, whatever you want to call it, gets the message to the right people. So I'm hoping that, you know, the message for today is able to get to the right people and being positive is a big, big part of being happy and being joyful in your life. And you get to choose. We were talking about this. You get to choose, right? Which direction you want to be. Um, is there anything that you want to share and kind of wrapping it up uh, that you would like to impart on people about um, your message as a mindset coach? Yeah, I think the, the most important thing for me has been that there are no quick fixes, that you cannot seek your healing outside of you, like external things. That was, you know, what I was doing a lot is so oh, maybe if I do this, I'm going to be happy. Maybe if I do that, I'm going to be happy. Maybe if I get this new shiny object, I'm going to get happier. Uh, but no, it's really the most important thing is to have compassion for yourself, to start loving yourself, to start recognizing all the good things you've had uh, done and where you've been so far. Like it's really acknowledging your past because without your past, you wouldn't be where you are today. Like I wouldn't be a coach today. You wouldn't be hosting this uh, beautiful web um, podcast. Sorry, podcast, <laughs> podcast. Um, you know, you learn. Like you said earlier, we have a specific journey because we need to learn something. This is, you know, the dharma. We need to our karma is our dharma. Um, and so, really, it's just like, yeah. My one message is love yourself. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Be compassionate with yourself learn um, to be kind to yourself, learn to listen to yourself and give yourself what you need when you need it. That's beautiful. As you're talking, I'm looking at the little ticker that goes below it. So <laughs> spreading kindness and compassion at onenessjunkie.com. And I'm thinking this is such a great alignment that I'm having you on the show because of your mindset. And this is something I've learned, you know, in my own journey and my own struggles. And I had great tragedy to get come overcome. And, you know, one of the things that I say on the podcast is that that kindness and compassion, yeah, we want to extend it to others, but actually when you extend it to yourself first, it's almost like it naturally ends up um, emul emulating over to the others. And so I say on the podcast, um, when we heal ourselves, we heal the world. So the the idea of you know hiring someone like yourself, Luca, or um, a, a person that aligns with the things that you are work, wanting and aware of working on is an important part. You know, being able to have a coach or a guide or a helper or a therapist or whatever you want to call it, a person, a, a listening ear, um, someone who is going to hold the space for your um, ability to dig deep and to help you through it. I mean, sometimes you need someone to kind of throw the rope down in the well and say, help me get out <laughs> of the well. Like I went too deep, you know, now I need a little help. So having someone on hand Absolutely. to do that is always nice. That's why there's so many coaches out there in the world, right? Yeah, that, that's so true. Like, yeah, accountability, uh, somebody who holds space for you and who listens without judgment. Uh, that's really important. That's the great qualities of a coach. I yeah, would say. absolutely. All right. Well, Luca, I've had a wonderful time visiting with you, getting to know you. And I didn't say this at the beginning, and I usually do, but I, I didn't know Luca before. 
And so this was my opportunity to get to know him along with you guys. And I love how, by the way, guys, like the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, brings the right people to be on the show. So it's so fun because I just am open to who needs to be next. And Lucas showed up. So um, it's fun to have you on the show. And I'm glad you're here today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And uh, thank you for sending me that message out of the blue. <laughs> um, yeah. you no, know, I love it. I love it when my story, you know, when I know that my story has touched somebody and then when they let me know it's even like double the pleasure <laughs> yeah um, and, and you now can we're get, sharing it with everyone <laughs> exactly because you can get you know even though i know what i'm why i'm sharing my story because i want to help people obviously i want people um to feel more confident and love themselves more but there's always a little bit of fear when you put yourselves out to millions of people right <laughs> yeah um, so you don't even know how you're gonna react to it right exactly so to receiving love from you know total strangers you know becoming friends that's that's all that's one of the perks of doing of being vulnerable yes well, you, like I hope... you said you never know what's you know what comes out of any opportunities that's right you just make yourself available right and as i was telling you before we hit the record button I'm doing this to hopefully inspire others who have a calling, who have a story, who have a, a yearning to make their pain powerful and helping others. If they've overcome their journey and they feel like they have something to offer and to contribute, I want to inspire people to follow that because when we all follow our true calling we are more joyful we are happier we are more in freedom and contentment and life is just better luca isn't it uh totally <laughs> do you, you choose this way versus the old life <laughs> uh, i don't want to go back to old luca <laughs> i will say it's so always much. evolving right so Not like true. you learn new skills and then you have these wonderful skills to continue to deal with life because it's not that life doesn't stop happening i mean you're gonna have more loss you're gonna lose your dad you're gonna have mm -hmm. this and that you know like things happen and that's why they say live in the present moment because sure. you never know what the future holds so that's the message i want to leave for today is to just be reminded to live in this present moment and choose wisely because yeah, <laughs> you're a powerful creator, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we let's, I'm glad you called me a friend. So now we're friends and uh, <laughs> let's keep that, keep it that way. And uh, hang on. I'm going to say goodbye to the audience and we'll talk to you later. Okay. Thanks, Luca. Bye. Bye.